This is Twit. We just heard a bunch of announcements. They had their amazing innovation uh, conference just recently, and they had a bunch of announcements that came out of there. And one of the biggest things was talk about neural processors. Now, I'm I'm curious. Uh, you know, I know we have a lot to talk about about all the things that came out, but this is one of the big things that our audience has been kind of wondering about. I've been worrying wondering about is just what is what is a neural processor? What's the difference between a neural processor? Why is Intel kind of you know, blanketing it? Why is it combining it with some of the, the current cores that it has today? Yeah, it's a great question. And uh, you can't be involved in a technology conversation today without talking about AI and in an AI dominated world, the amount of data that's generated, collected, needing processing is expanding exponentially. And edge solutions, uh, which are anything outside the data center, that process, analyze, and store data closer to where it's generated are being deployed more now than ever. So with all this data out there, you've got to have a way to process it faster at the edge. And one of the biggest, most prevalent edge devices out there uh, is the PC. So what we're going to do is we're putting, in addition to a CPU and a GPU into uh, every PC platform that goes out the door, uh, we're going to put add a, essentially an AI processor in addition to that. And that's called the NPU or neural processing unit. So that is uh, going to become standard with uh, with platforms that come out with the uh, now called it's codenamed Meteor Lake. It's going. We just announced the brand Intel Core Ultra, and it's essentially a breakthrough client product that delivers power efficient architecture at scale, a huge advancement in AI acceleration with that dedicated NPU, which essentially will help offload those uh, key. AI applications or tasks onto a dedicated neural processing um, unit that uh, will really help um, process AI and data at the edge faster than it's ever been possible before. And we hear we hear a lot of different terms out there. Obviously, you know, a lot of people are saying obviously you need a pretty powerful GPU if you want to do some of the current number crunching to support this uh, vector math and so on. But we also hear about the tensor processor units, the TPUs that a lot of org, uh, companies are now um, kind of bundling or adding to their kind of their to their to their infrastructure. So, wh what is the difference? What is what is the what is the power of this NPU that you get that these other processors don't give you? Well, the NPU um, is actually will be specific to the PC, whereas TPUs tend to be in, in the cloud and GPUs uh, for data center, uh, like with NVIDIA, tend to be you know heavily in the data center. And, and again, there's so much data out there that you can't possibly process it all in a data center. And it's simply just too expensive to round trip data to the cloud every time a piece of data is collected or generated at the edge. So, uh, you know, we believe that it's not a one size fits all scenario for AI. And you really need to look at the workload and the, the your price constraints and your time constraints and kind of decision criteria and make sure you've got the right processing processor for uh, um, for the task that you're trying to, to accomplish. So uh, we believe there's a place for all of them, but the NPU for uh, tasks that are processed on one of the most prevalent edge devices out there, which again is the PC, the NPU will be specifically and really ideally targeted for those. So the one of the interesting thing that I always worry about, especially in the workstations or desktop uh, universe, is the is the power consumption. And now that we're adding this additional kind of daughter uh, board or daughter processor or, you know, uh, you know, secondary processor core in there, um, you know, what does that do for power? Do people have to worry now you're trying to compute and do AI models and processing at the edge? Does that mean that they're going to have a lot, they're going to have to need to be at a spot where there's a lot, a lot of power, very consistent power, uh, you know, to be able to, to utilize this functionality? What, what does that look like? What's the, what's the plan there? Yeah, I don't have the exact data. And in fact, with, with, at launch, we'll provide more of that. But what I can tell you is the intention of having a dedicated AI coprocessor is to offload. So instead of running certain workloads on a CPU or in a graphics card that may not be really uh, ideal for that, the AI, the NPU is highly targeted for those applications that tend to be very data intensive and power hungry. So by offloading and be highly efficient, I think it'll be competitive. Again, the data will come out at launch, but um, I think it'll ultimately be a, it'll be a great thing for users. 
Fantastic. Now you talked a little bit about workloads. What is what are some of the targeted workloads to bring some of this powerful AI crun- number crunching and uh, model crunching to the edge? What what are, do you, what's some examples of workloads that you're talking about? Yeah, I think um, you know I I'll actually go to there's there's a lot of different use cases that are being t- batted around. Some I don't even think have been created yet. But you know I'll just go back to innovation, which was our technology event that uh, was hosted just the last a couple of days this week, and there was. There was three great examples and demos that were shared, and I would encourage anyone who didn't see them to go go search them online. But, um, you know, one of them was a uh, a company called Deep Render, which uses AI to compress files by 5x uh, what's possible today. Another one, which was called Rewind.ai, which essentially is like uh, can can basically capture data from it, it listens and can capture that data and then transcribe it for what it hears for future reference. Uh, including chat GPT like queries. And then the, the la- another one was Fabletics, which actually creates uh, a virtual avatar of you to, to try on clothes in a much more performant way that's ever been possible. So I think, I mean, those are three examples, but I think you're going to see industries and different types of use cases that span across performance, security, digital transformation. But those are at least three that I just, we just showed this week. Now, obviously, with the with the advent of the large language models and chat GPT, you see a lot of different models coming out. Is one of the target segment sectors of the market also LLMs and, and generative technology as well for the edge? Yeah, I think, you know, I think what's interesting about large language models is, you know, there's some models that are billions and billions of parameters. And, and when you have those, you need a, a heavy duty GPU and you know, sitting in a big data center and it's just, it's, it's so much data that has to be processed, but not all large language models are extra large and some are smaller. And, and we think that it's really going to be the type of thing where it depends on the size of the, of the language models and some where you're just doing inference on those large language models, a CPU or, you know, is, is going to be perfectly fine for that workload. So again, I think we're, we're really in the early stages of AI and certainly chat GPT and, you know, has all the the buzz and the headlines, but very few people are going to be able to afford to build a massive large language model. And they're going to be looking for ways to make decisions or analyze data in a much more cost effective way. And that's why we think that uh, edge AI is really where there's going to be a lot of action. And it's where a lot of our our focus is, in addition to making sure that there are viable alternatives to, uh, to NVIDIA GPUs in the data center as well. Now, speaking of innovation, uh, there was a lot of announcements out there. One of the biggest things that I thought was pretty interesting was just a new process for chip design. They're shifting to using glass um, for, as a medium in, in chip design to help kind of uh, break up the, the the slowdown of Moore's law. Obviously, what what, what do you th- what, what's going to happen with that? What what is Intel going to be using that for? Are they going to be developing just a new type of set of, of CPUs, uh, or they've or they had they already done that? Yeah, you know, I think what's exciting about this announcement, a lot of the announcement is that we did Moore's law is alive and well, it's just evolving. And, you know, it's becoming as much of a physics challenge as it is a manufacturing challenge. So what you're seeing is Intel's not standing still because to, 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 to create and package the number of the billions of transistors that we're now putting on to, to into silicon or into CPUs, um, it requires amazing innovations. Uh, like the one that we announced. So, you know, I think you're just going to see Intel with our um, five nodes in four years um, uh, announcements that we've made. Uh, it's going to come with a lot of innovations around the packaging and the, um, the development uh, as part of that. Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. The training industry's completion rate is barely 30%. ACI Learning blows its competitors away with an over 80% completion rate. Twit listeners will receive at least 20% off or as much as 65% off an IT Pro Enterprise Solution Plan. The discount is based on the size of your team when you fill out the form. 